Howdy neighbors, David here. And today on Boondock Stallions, we're going to be talking about The Little Shop of Horrors, a Star Wars story. Now, I know it's not really a Star Wars story, but this is my own little fan fiction theory that I really like, and I've been sitting on it since 1997 when George Lucas released the special editions in theaters right before he released The Phantom Menace in 1989. So I'm excited. You guys should be excited too, because I finally found a home for the Audrey 2 in the Star Wars universe, and it's on Tatooine, or at least one of its home worlds is on Tatooine. So, uh, before I get started, I know that today was supposed to be my Child's Play review and breakdown of the entire movie, uh, first movie and the sequels, the remake, and the TV show that's coming up, but it's actually turned into a much more daunting task than I'd originally anticipated. I want to get you guys all the facts, all the details, and as much, much as I can in this. So look for it Sunday night or early Monday morning. I've been filming bits and bits and putting pieces together, and we should have everything done by then at the latest. And then we can talk about what we're going to cook Monday night. So Little Shop of Horrors, a Star Wars story. Here we go. So, in The Little Shop of Horrors, we never really get a definitive answer as to where the Audrey 2 came from. In the 1960s film, Seymour bought the seeds from a mysterious Japanese gardener in Skid Row, and in the 1986 film, there was a total eclipse of the sun, complete darkness, a flash of light, and then when the sun came back on, Seymour found the plant outside of a store on the side of the road. Um... And if you've ever seen the director's cut of the movie, you find out that the, the plan was, in fact, an alien bent on world domination and eating the entire human race. But they don't actually tell you the name of the alien, the planet of origin, the galactic coordinates, not even a species designation according to the universal ratification of the Shadow Proclamation. They don't give you any information at all. And so we're all left to wonder as to where it came from. And then, in 1997, our Lord and Savior, George Lucas, re-released the original Star Wars trilogy in theaters with new special effects. It was awesome. I got to see A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi on the big screen again. It was amazing. I mean, literally the only thing he messed up was making Han shoot at the exact same time as Greedo did, because in what universe does Han not shoot first? I'm pretty sure George Lucas might have been drinking at the time he made that decision, but don't quote me because I could be wrong. But as I was watching the special edition of Return of the Jedi, and I noticed some new special effects being added to the Jabba's barge sequence, I came to realize that the Audrey 2 is in fact a Sarlacc pit. So here's what Wikipedia has to say about Sarlaccs. Sarlaccs began their lives as spores and were able to travel great distances. When a male and female encountered one another, the male would parasitically feed off of the female, diminishing her size while increasing his own. Once the male reached the female's original size, he would burst, releasing millions of spores into the air and atmosphere. Ew. Once Sarlaccs reached their maturity after 30,000 years, they would then burrow themselves nearly 100 meters below the surface, feeding on creatures unfortunate enough to fall into their mouths. Victims of the Sarlacc were injected with immobilizing neurotoxins that caused constant pain and, while still conscious, digested for a millennium. A hundred meters in height, its entire body was buried in sand, except for its massive mouth and tongue. The Sarlacc had several appendages that branched off from its buried body and many stomachs. The creature swallowed its prey whole, and its mouth contained rows of hundreds of spear-like teeth, which kept the victim from climbing back out. Well, most victims, hashtag Boba Fett. Anyways, there was some debate amongst the xenobiologists as to whether the creature was an animal or an unusual carnivorous plant, though most found the creature far too dangerous to merit an extended study of the question. Now, that right there is all the evidence I needed to be certain that the Audrey 2 was a Sarlacc. I mean, the fact that it began its life as a spore and was capable of traveling great distances, like, would a great distances be considering um, outer space? Does that fall into the category? Because if it got into outer space and then hitched a ride on a meteor, 
it could absolutely travel to Earth and then land here. That total eclipse of the sun could have been the meteor coming and crashing onto the planet somewhere nearby and, you know, movie magic and edits, boom, there's the Audrey 2. And why not? It worked in every Spider-Man story when they needed to get Venom and Carnage onto the planet. Venom would show up in a meteor. So there's that. Um, now, they said that the Sarlax would reach their maturity after 30,000 years. So, technically, the Audrey 2 was a baby, like a newborn. Like, they hadn't even left the hospital old yet and was already, you know, fully capable of eating a whole person and eight whole people, as it were. So, um, when it said that it would eat its prey whole, it did. The Audrey 2 totally ate a human body like a pelican and a fish just tilts the head back and just rawr, 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 just like a pelican or when my best friend takes an aspirin um, so there's no telling how big the Audrey 2 would have gotten and like I said in the deleted scenes they you can see the Audrey 2 style plants going and being bigger than the Statue of Liberty, so it only goes to show that it could, in fact, be a Sarlacc like it was in Return of the Jedi. Um, he said its teeth, its mouth had hundreds of rows of spear-like teeth. Yep, we also saw that on the Audrey, too. Um, I love this theory. Uh, I love the movie. I love A Little Shop of Horrors. I love Star Wars. These are some of my favorite things. And I'm actually getting ready to start reviewing um, Star Wars as soon as I'm done with my Child's Play breakdown of the whole series. Um, and if you're a fan of A Little Shop of Horrors, there's even some more good news. They are currently remaking it. Uh, it'll have Scarlett Johansson as Audrey, Chris Evans as her abusive boyfriend, the dentist, uh, Oren Scrivello. Taron Edgerton will be Seymour, which will be awesome, and Billy Porter will be playing the Audrey 2, and that's amazing because Billy Porter is gold. Everything he does is magic, and I really am looking forward to his performance as uh, the Audrey 2. Well, Stallions, that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, please give this video a like, subscribe, and a share. It will be greatly appreciated. If you haven't seen the new trailer for the Bill and Ted movie, I'm going to leave a link down in the description so y'all can check that out because it looks like it's going to be great. And I know we've been waiting for it for a long time. I've been waiting for it for a long time. And this movie looks like it's going to deliver on some laughs and some nostalgia from Bill and Ted. And I mean, honestly, with all the John Wick movies, which are good, I'm not, gonna, I'm not knocking the John Wick series at all. It's nice to see Keanu Reeves hasn't. Pardon me for being Southern when I say this, but gotten too big for his britches and can go back and be Ted Theodore Logan and entertain all of us one last time. So until next week, Stallions, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Ba, 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 ba.